What's up everybody? Today we're doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna talk about one of the best mods that I've done to this truck so far. And that's a three channel dash cam system with a touchscreen mirror. Let's jump right into it. This is the Pormito D50 triple mirror dash cam with a 12 inch touchscreen. And that is one of my neighbors walking their dog. So on the top of the mirror, we have a couple different inputs. We have the AV plug. We got the GPS receiver plug, a micro SD card slot, and the power plug. At the bottom of the mirror is a physical button that lets you turn the mirror off and on. Let's take a look at the three cameras that it comes with. First, we have the rear camera, which is waterproof, so it can be mounted externally. And then we have the front camera, which is just double-sided sticky tape to the windshield. And lastly, the interior or middle camera. Neither the front nor the middle camera are waterproof, so they do need to be mounted on the interior of the vehicle. All right, so let's take a look at some of the features of the touchscreen. And right now we have it in rear view mode, and I don't know if you can tell on camera here, but it's raining, and you can see the raindrops pretty clearly, so there's very little lag. I mean, there is some, but not enough to bother me, not enough to not use it for a rear view mirror. The screen does display some information, and if you look at the top left, you can see the little blinking red dot indicating that it's currently recording. I have it set to one minute loops. Right below that, you have your current heading and your current speed based on the GPS receiver. Up in the top right, you have the current time and the date. And just below that, you have some indicator icons. So we can see that the GPS receiver is connected. It's currently on loop recording. The mic is recording. An SD card is plugged in and it's currently getting power, which is kind of obvious because it's on, but whatever. As you can see, you have a really wide angle view from left to right. However, you don't see much in terms of height being that it's mirror shaped. And this is one of the coolest features on this mirror and I didn't even know about it buying it, but after playing with it, you can pan it down and up by using the touch screen. So you can see the full 1920 by 1080. So like I said, I didn't know about this feature when I ordered this, but it's a super helpful feature and a pretty neat one. If you tap the screen, you get a menu bar at the bottom. To the far right is a padlock icon. If you hit that, you lock all the current files, meaning they cannot be deleted, they cannot be overwritten. And right next to that is how to switch camera views. So right now in the rear view, we're gonna go to the front camera which you can also pan down and up as you please. And I'm OCD, so I'm gonna get this to the setting that I like. And we got the interior camera as well, which is mirrored. And I mostly use it to see what my dogs are doing in the back. And lastly, we have a view with all three cameras at the same time. So in this view, you can't pan the cameras, but you don't need to. It's showing the full resolution, just squeezed in from the left and the right. Let's go back to the rear view. To stop recording video, just hit the stop icon. And once it's stopped, you can take a still photo if you like. And you can also play back the files that are currently stored on the SD card. Now, this thing doesn't have any Wi-Fi connectivity, so if you want to move the files to a different device, you do have to remove the micro SD card. Lastly, we have the gear icon, which goes in the settings menu, and you can change quite a few options in here. The first one is loop recording time, which can either be set to one, two, or three minutes long. And then sound recording on or off. Beep is just an audible tone you hear letting you know you're selecting stuff on the screen. And volume adjusts the volume of that audible beep plus the video playback as well. There's a parking monitoring setting, which I haven't played with yet, but apparently it'll record even when the car's parked as long as you have it wired to constant power. All right, so let's skip some of these and go to the G sensor, which detects any collisions and vibrations. You can turn the G sensor off so it doesn't automatically trigger like when you're off road on a trail or something like that, or change the sensitivity level. If the G sensor is triggered, it will automatically lock that video file so that it cannot be overwritten. Other than that rear facing view that you saw earlier, you also have a dedicated backup view using the same camera. The backup view does have reverse lines and you can adjust those reverse lines. So let me shift the vehicle in reverse and it'll go from the rear view to the backup view, which you can also change the angle of. And the system automatically remembers the last camera angle view that you have everything set at, so it will always return to that view, including the backup view, which is again, a separate view from your normal rear view. And obviously you only get the backup view when you wire the system into your reverse lamp, which triggers that view to initiate. 
Alright, so now let's take a look at some of the recorded video clips directly off the SD card with no color correction and no editing whatsoever. So first we have the front camera and as you can see in the bottom left you have the date, the time, your current GPS coordinates and your current speed based on that GPS receiver. And here's the rear view with the same information in that bottom left hand corner. And lastly you have the middle camera, which for some reason doesn't have that info in that bottom left hand corner. I don't know if that's a setting I missed or what, but yeah, it doesn't show up. And right here I'm just showing you the front and rear camera together. These are on the same one minute time loop, so you can see that the times are synced between the two. And right here is all three cameras together, again, on the same exact one minute time loop. Next up, I'm going to show you all three cameras in full frame, full resolution footage, again, unmodified, just so that you can see what the quality looks like in different kinds of conditions. Here's the front camera in 1920 by 1080 resolution at 27.5 frames per second. And in case you're wondering, this is Alabama Hills. Here is the front camera at nighttime, which uses a StarViz color night vision sensor. And here we have a couple guys running red lights. That's awesome. I hate the drivers around here. So as you can see, the video quality isn't amazing by any means, but it does the job. And remember, this is a dash cam system. It's not a three, $400 action cam that records in 4K 60 frames a second. So if you set the right expectations, I think you'll like the results. Now here's the rear cam, which also records in 1920 by 1080 at 27.5 frames per second. So I didn't buy this dash cam system just for the heck of it or because it's a cool gadget. Once I get some motivation and stop being lazy, I'm finally building out my custom drawer system, which is literally gonna block the entire view out the back window. So this system is acting as a complete rear view mirror replacement for me. And I found an added benefit, which is the way I have it mounted, I basically have zero blind spots. When a vehicle disappears off the rear view, I already see them in the corner of my eye out the side window. There's no way for me to capture that on camera, I just gotta take my word for it. And here's the rear cam which also has the StarViz color night vision sensor. And in this shot you can see how clear that rear view is at nighttime. I mean you can definitely make out the guy's face that's behind me and you can even see whatever he's doing, I don't know, picking his teeth or something. So the middle camera records in 1280 by 720 resolution, also at 27.5 frames per second. The middle camera does not have a StarViz color night vision sensor. So now the ultimate question, what do I think about this Pormito triple mirror dash cam system? Well, it definitely checks all my boxes and it kind of exceeded my expectations. And I said it earlier, but I'll say it again. I did not expect you to be able to adjust the angle of the cameras. I mean, it's logical. It makes a lot of sense, but just didn't expect that. So that was a nice added touch. There are a couple things I would change about this system to make it perfect. Number one being that middle camera. It's kind of like the middle child that got left out of some of the nice features like the 1920 by 1080 resolution and that StarViz color night vision sensor. I personally wish the front camera were weatherproof also, so that I could use it in more of an off-roading situation. And lastly, some wireless connectivity would be nice, just to bring it up to date with some of the newer dash cams that are out there right now. So Pormito, if you're watching this, give me the option to replace that front camera with a weatherproof one, and give me an option to upgrade that middle camera to a better one with the StarViz night vision sensor and higher resolution. I will gladly pay for that. Take my money. So that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and hit that bell icon if you want to be notified of the next video. I hope you'll join me for the next one. This is Roger, over and out.